Well, if you're like me, you have about a million game ideas that never make it to see the light of day. I keep finding myself wanting to make a game with guns, survival, PvE, PvP, and all that. And then of course I fall into the pit of discouragement when I think about all the work that goes into making all the core elements of those games. So I made a project that I could experiment with where all that stuff was already made. Introducing GameKit, a third-person project template made in Unreal Engine. It comes with a character with an inventory system, pickups, and other interactables. You can equip different types of weapons, and the player is already animated to handle things like shooting and reloading. It has a navigation system, consumables, and a hunger and thirst system which can be turned on or off. Projectiles, effects, and game objects can be modified and you can add new ones to suit your game's needs. Weapon objects, for example, contain every setting you'd need for melee weapons, projectile weapons, and line trace weapons, so you can customize your combat system without having to make the blueprints for it. The combat system is multiplayer ready, so you can make a PvP game, and there's also AI classes for simple PvE as well. AI classes can be set to different teams, so they'll fight alongside your players or fight against them. Set up their weapon classes to make them shoot from a distance, or get up close and personal. Multiplayer-ready classes are also included for interaction, such as opening doors, crafting, or storing items. All the widgets are also designed to be very simple, so they're easy to change, so you can fit this project to the art style of your game. This kit is helpful when you just want to write the game logic for your game, start working on art assets and dedicating your time to the really fun stuff, rather than working on the repetitive core functions. So let's take a look at what's really included in the project. Okay, so here we are in the game project, and we'll just get started by opening up the viewport and then hit and play. So as you can see, it starts with a very simple third person character, and we'll just go through the list of different things in the world to explore. There is a very basic weapon system, uh, and it is included, like I said, with animations. So if I wanted to pick up a rifle, I could pick up a rifle, I could point it around, I could shoot, um, shoot a little bit, and then I can reload the rifle. Um, these are all projectile weapons, so just like the shotgun, another type of projectile weapon, I can shoot and it'll actually spread the projectiles. And then this is all customizable, so you see how it's kind of random, the spread. You can change that and you can make it spread it more or increase the pellet size so there's more pellets or less pellets. This is a ray trace weapon, the, weapon, the rifle here, uh, the sniper. This sniper, you can uh, it zooms in really far and then you can take shots. I also have included some more primitive weapons, like a sword. So if you want to melee, meleeing is something that you can do. And this, it's a capsule trace, so it's, it's a little bit wider, so it's more accurate. And then there's a little bit less distance on it. And then here for the bow, there is a bow object too, so I can shoot over here these guys and I can uh, hit them with a bow and arrow, which is another projectile based weapon. This one works a little bit differently than the others though, because it does start off in your right hand and then when you pull back um, and draw the bow, it will appear in your left hand. Coming over here, there's the interactable, where's number two? Oh, here's number two. The resources. So the resources are just drops you can pick up and they show up in your inventory on the right side of the screen. And they can be used for crafting or dropping or anything you really want because there is uh, each item contains something called an item object which just contains the data for what that item does. So for example, these are very generic. They really don't do anything uh, other than uh, help you with crafting, which is something that you would move over here to the interactables. This is a crafting table. And so this is a very, very basic UI that just renders some of the item information that you can craft that is listed in the interactable. So everything has a little crafting recipe, so you could just put the item ID in here. And so for example, if I wanted to make this ARC-7 rifle, it requires a rifle body and 1,000 metal. So first of all, I have to make the rifle body, and then that will put that in my inventory. And then I have enough to craft the ARC-7 rifle, so I can make that. And then moving over here, this is an ammo table, which works exactly the same way. It's, it's completely identical, other than the fact that the inventory of items to craft is different in the object. So I can craft the ammo for this with 40 metal, and that just takes the metal out of my inventory and produces that item. So now I can have a, my own rifle to shoot. This over here, the sphere is a container. So this is a place you can actually store the information in your inventory, you can put it in here. And this is also, it's all multiplayer networked. So if you store something in a container, you can have a friend log into the server and then he can pick up items out of the container that you left for him. Over here is footstep sounds. This is one of the more simple ones, but this is just something that is also kind of tedious setting up. So uh, you can run around on the concrete, but then when you get on the dirt here, it makes a little dirt sound. So I have a little bit of a difference there in what footsteps you make just based on the physical material of what you're running on. That makes things a little bit easier to have that set up. 
And then over here is consumables. So if you look in the top left, you can see that there's a thirst and hunger. This is for very basic survival. If you do want to have something like that in your game, this can be turned off, of course, but if you do want to have some kind of survival, the consumables are another type of item that you can use to eat or drink. So if I just eat the meat here, I'll see that my hunger is replenished and it, or it adds a certain amount of points. And then if I take a drink of water, it will also do the same and replenish my thirst. And then each of these items can also be modified to how much of that they replenish, if that makes sense. I did forget to talk about this interactable. This is a, a door, very simple, it just opens and closes. Um, the last thing I'll talk about, at least in this section, is the navigation waypoint. This little orange, tri this little yellow triangle points. Uh, if you look at the top of the screen, I have a compass, and wherever that triangle is, it, the compass will always point to that triangle. So you can move around different waypoints, put a widget on it, or whatever, uh, whatever suits your project's needs. And then you can do that. And so, lastly, I'll show. I'll show this off, but I know they're going to kill me because I only have four bullets. So I'm going to try to get some more, reload, and then run over here and have some fun with the uh, NPCs. The NPCs are programmed uh, in different walking states. So that guy's walking state was to do nothing. Um, the other guy back there, he's patrolling. The swords guy, he's, he's just finding random points to run to. So if I break the cycle here, you'll see the swordsman, he kind of just runs around and does whatever he wants. Whereas this guy, he kind of is on patrol. And we'll see how, let me demonstrate by walking back here so he can't see me. Oh, he's ready. <laughs> he doesn't even need to do that. He, he knows I'm here. Oh, I'm out of ammo. It's not good. Here, I'll show you what the death looks like. I'll let him kill me. Now you see how he runs up there. And then he's gonna run to the other side too. So he's on a patrol. So they have, the NPCs have different loops. And they can be set to different teams. And you can have a, as many teams as you want, so they can fight each other as well. So I'll show you a little bit of the actual project. So the items are all stored in a data table. All It's called items. So if I open that, you can see every item in the game. And then each, of this, each item has a structure. So it's name, description, utility, which this isn't used in the project, but you could use it for your purposes. Uh, whether the item is stackable, just a simple icon. The crafting recipe, which is just the name of the item that would be required to craft it, and then how much of it would be required. So if this, if you could craft cash, you could say it would take like M underscore wood, which is another row name right here, so that's the ID. You could say it takes 100, and then you could craft it if there was a crafting table where this was available. Uh, rarity, this goes without saying. Uh, and then the item object. So this is really the payload of data that comes with it. Most of these don't have an item object because they don't really need one. But items that do would be, for example, like water. Water is something that you can drink. So if I look at the item object, this comes from the food object class. And the food object class has these variables. What sound it makes when you consume the item. And then if it restores thirst, restores hunger, it will do it that way. Uh, and then there's obviously weapon items, which are a little bit more um, extensive with how they work, but there are a lot more parameters in a weapon object. So that's pretty much it for the item system. Uh, to showcase a little bit of these interactables, the way the interactables work is when you open an interactable, it will have a certain script uh, of what it does when it's interacted with. So for example, in this case, this is actually a child of a crafting table base which takes in a name, so what kind of crafting table it is, and then all the items and their associated data table. So I could set any of the rows in the data table for the value of what you can craft at this crafting table, and then that'll open. And then of course the parent class and what it actually does and how it works is uh, very simple. It will create the crafting dialog when it's interacted with. So this is just a simple delegate dispatcher. And this is the way that all of them work. The same goes for the door. This is another, this is why I say this is a better example, I think, because this just shows very simply when it's interacted with, it will open the door. So that's about it for the project. This can definitely be a good start for you if you wanted to start your game with basic combat mechanics, basic inventory mechanics, and you just want to get programming the game and not worrying about all these core things. I left a link in the description if you're interested in checking this out, and definitely let me know if you guys use this to start your next game in Unreal Engine.